A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico, back with you all once again for another episode of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. <clears throat> this is episode 125. It is August 25th, 2020, and this is our 161st day under COVID-19 restrictions and our second take of today's vlog. We attempted to come through to you this morning from the Imperial Gardens, but we got out there, did the whole show, wind noise was too much, you couldn't hear a word we said, and so here we are in the studio, uh, bringing it to you once again. So, this is take two. Let's begin with our national days. It's Eat a Peach Day. Mmm. Oh, they're really good this time of year, aren't they? Yes, indeed. Take your cat to the vet day. Well, that would be an expensive proposition for us. We've got four. And National Bow Day. For those of you who don't know what a bow is, it's a pork bun. A uh, real favorite here in San Francisco. Wonderful Chinese dish. Uh, that was for the 22nd of August. Moving on to the 23rd. It is International Day for Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its Abolition and Valentino Day, because this was the day that the movie actor and heartthrob Rudolph Valentino passed away. His grave is, in, it's actually a crypt, in the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Lawn. I screwed that up. Hollywood Forever. Hollywood Lawn is buried at Hollywood Forever, which is why it gets confusing anyway. Rudolph Valentino is interred at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, not far from Mickey Rooney and uh, Peter Lorre. Uh, moving on to the 24th, it is Pluto Demoted Day. No, we will not stand for that. We decree that Pluto is, was, and always will be a planet. Vesuvius Day. We'll get to why later on. National Waffle Day. Hmm, I like waffles. No way, I don't like waffles. No, I think I do like waffles. The 25th, Whiskey Sour Day, sounds good. And Banana Split Day. Not the banana splits, fa la la, la 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 la, no. No, we're talking about the dessert. Yummy, yummy. We have two Florida Man stories today because there was just too many not to do both of them. Our first one, Florida Man drunk and naked allegedly set house on fire in failed cookie baking attempt. Only in Florida, even more so. A Florida man thought female drivers are incompetent, so he shot at them while they were driving. The man thought that women were dim-witted and their sole purpose is to give birth to children. Keep it classy, Florida man. For our San Francisco story today, we're only going to do one. We'll touch upon another one. Uh, we're relying on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. Well, first of all, August 24 was groundbreaking for the California Midwinter Exposition, the first of three World's Fairs to come to California, 1894, 1915, 1939, in San Francisco, the rather. But it was on this date in 1929 that the Graf Zeppelin flew over San Francisco. Let's uh, read the description from the captain of the Graf Zeppelin. At 4 p.m. on August 25th, the American coast came into sight. Shortly after 5 o'clock, we flew over the Golden Gate in San Francisco Bay after a flight of 67 hours from coast to coast. We, record, we had a record we could be proud of. The beauties of San Francisco Bay have long been sung in all languages. The Golden Gate has not been given this name without reason. That's a double negative. As we steered inland at 1,600 feet and viewed the fabulous scene, we were deeply affected and even moved to tears. The setting sun flooded sea and land and the surrounding mountains with warm, golden light and painted an extraordinary picture. At the reception, 
which this beautiful city had prepared for us, was no less magnificent. Squadrons of planes flew out to meet us and escorted us past the entrance. The vessels lying in the harbor and at the docks had dressed ship. Their whistles sounded, a greeting, accompanied by the tooting of thousands of motor car horns on the streets. We needed both eyes and ears to appreciate the enthusiasm of our welcome. Many times we had experienced such receptions, but this one, after many long and monotonous flights above the clouds and fog, had remained unforgettable in my mind for its warmth and beauty. Very nice description of flying into San Francisco on a Zeppelin. Sorry, can we get the microphone a little bit closer here now that we can put the book down? Well, let's move on to our other history for today, beginning with the Friday the 22nd. 1849, the first air raid in history, Austria launches pilotless balloons against the Italian city of Venice. 1902, U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt becomes the first U.S. chief executive to ride in a car. 1921, J. Edgar Hoover becomes assistant director of the FBI. He wore a lovely frock to the ceremony. 1944, Adolf Hitler orders Paris to be destroyed. Luckily, his orders were not followed. 1956, U.S. President Eisenhower and Vice President Nixon are renominated at the Republican Convention at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. 2004, The Scream, the 1910 painted version, and Madonna, two paintings by Edvard Munch, are stolen at gunpoint from the Munch Museum in Oslo, Norway. They were recovered nine days later. Uh, moving on to uh, the 23rd, 18, oh, sorry, 1879, the year 79, Mount Vesuvius begins stirring on the feast day of Vulcan, oops, Roman god of fire. It erupts the next day and kills approximately 15,000 people. 1869, the first carload of rail freight, boots and shoes, arrives in San Francisco from Boston after a 16-day trip. 1872, the first Japanese commercial ship visits San Francisco. It's carrying a load of tea. 1869, the first ship to shore wireless message. Sherman is sighted. It received in the U.S. from lightship number 70 to a coastal receiving station at the Cliff House in San Francisco. 1903, the sixth, at the Sixth Zionist Congress, Theodore Herschel declares the Jewish state. 1919, got a few comic strips to talk about today, Gasoline Alley premieres in the Chicago Tribune, uh, very uh, significant at the time because it was the first comic strip where the characters aged, and they're still aging even though they're, you know, waltz, what, over 100 now? <laughs> well, uh, 1954, the first flight of the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft. It is still in production with over 2,500 being built. I think they're on Model J by this point, if I remember right. 1990, East and West Germany announced that they would reunite on October 3rd of that year. 2005, Hurricane Katrina forms over the Bahamas, later becoming a Category 5 hurricane which destroys New Orleans. 2007, the hashtag is invented. Now, okay, the hashtag has been on the keyboard for a long time, but that's the first time it was used on the interwebs and has become, of course, uh, ubiquitous now. Uh, it was actually in a tweet by U.S. product designer Chris Messina. Moving on to the 24th of August, 1814, British forces capture Washington, D.C. and destroy many landmarks in the War of 1812. 1847, Charlotte Bronte finishes the manuscript of Jane Eyre. 1853, the first potato chips, allegedly, are prepared by Chef George Crumb at Moon's Lake House near Saratoga Springs, New York. We say allegedly because it's popular legend uh, there are supposedly other recipes before then, but that's sort of the accepted birth date of, of the potato chip. 1891, Thomas Edison patents the motion picture camera. 1909, workers start pouring concrete for the Panama Canal. 1932 is the first transcontinental nonstop flight by a woman, Amelia Earhart. 
1991, Mikhail Gorbachev resigns as head of the USSR Communist Party. 2011, Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, resigns as CEO and is succeeded by Tim Cook as a result of his pancreatic cancer, which would ultimately take his life. And we do like to point out that this entire vlog, every bit of it, is done on an iPhone. We have been a ded dedicated Apple user since 1990. We don't do Windows. Moving on to August 25th, 1609, Galileo demonstrates his first telescope to Venetian lawmakers. 1864, combination rail and ferry service are available from San Francisco to Alameda for the first time. <clears throat> 1910, Yellow Cab is formed. 1916, the U.S. Department of Interior forms the National Park Service. 1919 is the first scheduled passenger service by airplane, Paris to London. In 1958, Momofuku Ando markets the first package of pre-cooked instant noodles, chicken, C-H-I-K-I-N, ramen. So that was uh, solves a mystery for us because we were wondering why there is a chain of ramen restaurants, there's one here in San Francisco in J-Town, hugely popular, called Momofuku. Well, it's named for the inventor of instant ramen. There you go. 1991, Linux was born when Linus Torvalds sends off an email announcing his project to create a new operating system. 2012, Voyager 1 spacecraft becomes the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space. It was launched in 1977. Let's move on to our births today, shall we? Starting off with the 22nd, 1862, the composer Claude Debussy. 1880, George Harriman, American cartoonist, comic strip again. He was the creator of Crazy Cat. Uh, remember, Ignatz the Rat was in love with Crazy Cat, so he'd throw bricks at her head to show how much he loved her and was always arrested by Officer Pup. 1893, the birth of Dorothy Parker who wrote one of my favorite poems about the martini. I'd like to have a martini, she wrote. Two, at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. After four, I'm under my host. 1904, the birth of Deng Xiaoping, Chinese revolutionary and paramount leader of China for a number of years. 1920, the great science fiction writer, Ray Bradbury, 1934, General Norman Schwarzkopf, Storm and Norman. Moving on to the 23rd, uh, 1895, Blossom Rock. That's a name you might not be familiar with unless you were a fan of the original TV series of The Addams Family, for she played Grandmama. Little known fact, she is the sister of Jeanette McDonald, who starred in the movie San Francisco with Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy, sang the song San Francisco. San Francisco, open your golden gates. You know the song, right? Countess and I have sung it on a number of occasions. Better than that. Um, also, Blossom Rock was a navigational hazard in the middle of San Francisco Bay. It was a submerged rock. It was blown up in the 1800s to make the... Uh, Waterway more clear for cargo traffic. Everybody in the city turned out to watch that. It's depicted on a mural in the Palace Hotel. If you go through the Pied Piper Lounge and the restaurant, there's two murals. We are depicted on one panel and the implosion of Blossom Rock is there as well. Oh, Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, he's on the mural. Uh, who else? A lot of Crabtree, possibly the Countess. Oh, it's a great mural if you ever get a chance to see it. We'll try to put a picture up here of it because it's really a very overlooked mural and a very good one. And we're not just saying that because we are on it. It's a great mural. Where were we? <clears throat> 1933, the birth of Pete Wilson, the 36th governor of California. 1940, Valerie Harper. Um, of course, we remember her uh, from the series uh, Mary Tyler Moore Show, had her own spin off for a while, had a series later, which she was fired from, long story. Passed away recently, though. Great actor. 
1960 pop artist Rodney Allen Greenblatt, well, he's sort of a neo-pop artist. He was born around the time of pop art. He was born here in San Francisco, though. Love his artwork. Moving on to the 24th, 1933, Yasser Arafat, chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization. 1934, I Dream of Jeannie herself, Barbara Eden. 1945, Marsha P. Johnson, uh, African-American, gay liberation, AIDS activist, drag queen, transgender, pioneer, Stonewall veteran. She was there that night. She is possibly credited with throwing the glass that broke the mirror that started the riot, but numerous people have claimed that. Uh, but we'll go with we'll go with her. Yes, indeed. And 1947, drummer for The Who, the crazy, wonderful Keith Moon. Moving on to the 25th, 1530, Ivan the Terrible. Oh, he wasn't that bad. 1796, James Lick, American land baron, our former landlord. 1819, Alan Pinkerton, American private detective founder of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. There was a San Francisco link to that because Dashiell Hammett was a Pinkerton detective, worked in the flood building where their offices were, right next door, John's Grill, home of the Maltese Falcon, because that's where Hammett wrote much of the Maltese Falcon. They're reopened, by the way. They're doing sidewalk service right now. Go by there. 1936, Bret Hart, a great author and of San Francisco, was here for a time. 1913, another cartoonist, but I gotta say, one of my absolute favorites, Walt Kelly, drew the comic strip Pogo, and um, just a wonderful, wonderful cartoonist and animator. He even animated uh, Pogo. If you search the YouTube, well, you're on there now watching this probably, uh, there, it's on there, and it's really very good. But Pogo is a great comic strip. If you never, if you never read it, you can find it. It's just the best. Where were we? Oh, 1916, the actor Van Johnson. Uh, 1917, Don DeFore, Mr. B on Hazel. 1917, the actor Mel Ferrer. 1918, Leonard Bernstein, Leonard Bernstein, which is correct. You say Bernstein, I say Bernstein. Let's call the whole thing off. Of course, the composer of West Side Story, Candide, great conductor, pianist. Uh, and it says here, egotist, and well, I would go along with that. When, when you're as talented as Leonard Bernstein, you've got a right to have a big ego. And 1919, George Wallace, American politician and uh, former governor of Alabama, presidential candidate. 1923, Mr. Let's Make a Deal himself, Monty Hall. 1930, Sean Connery is born. 1931, we just lost him, Regis Philbin. And 1949, Gene Simmons and the band Kiss. 1954, Declan Patrick McManus. You know him better as Elvis Costello, one of our absolute favorite musicians. Saw him on a live on a number of occasions near the beginning of his career. Uh, met him once. Won a look-alike contest. Well, the gentleman who looks like me did. We'll try to put a picture of that up here if we can find it. Where were we? 1966, Michael Cohen. Not the Michael Cohen who tunes into our vlog every day. Hi, Mike. Sorry about you having the same name as this guy. Uh, former lawyer to Donald Trump, but boy, his tell-all book, I think it's called Disloyal, is coming out very soon. Can't wait to read it. Our deaths today. 1485, Richard III, King of England. Didn't they find his bones recently? I believe they did. In a parking lot. Well, buried under a parking lot. They weren't just sitting there. 1980, James Smith McDonnell, American manufacturer of aircraft. McDonnell Aircraft, McDonnell Douglas, which we don't call it. Our father worked for Douglas Aircraft for 35 years. We always refer to it and will always refer to it as Douglas Aircraft. Anybody out there who was in a Douglas family probably agrees with us on that point. Uh, let's see, the 23rd. So those were the 22nd, now we're on the 23rd. 
1927, Sacco and Vanzetti, executed in Massachusetts. 1971, the original Shamu at SeaWorld. <coughs> and Orchid Whale. Orca. Hmm. Orchid Whale? No. Orca Whale, yes. 1967, industrialist Henry J. Kaiser, very important figure in the Bay Area. Kaiser Steel, Kaiser Concrete, builder of Liberty Ships. Of course, Kaiser Permanente, who is where we go for our medical care. 1987, Bayard Rustin, American civil rights leader, organized the March on Washington, uh, was openly gay and was kind of kept in the shadows because of that, but uh, a real leader of the American civil rights movement. Moving on to the 25th, 1819, James Watt, Scottish inventor, mechanical engineer, and chemist, invented the steam engine. 1822, William Herschel, German-British astronomer, discovered Uranus. Not mine, yours. I'll always do that joke. Not 1867, Michael Faraday, English scientist, discovered electromagnetic induction, invented the first electric motor. Where do we be without electricity? I'd be sitting in the dark talking to myself. That's what. Uh, we got into a couple of uh, bigots. No better word for that. First being 1945, John Birch, the namesake of the John Birch Society. He was an American intelligence officer and missionary, not a bigot. Uh, 1956, Alfred Kinsey, American entomologist and sexologist. The Kinsey Report that really changed the way we think about sex. 1967, well, here's another bigot for you. George Lincoln Walk Rockwell, head of the American Nazi Party, is assassinated. 1984, the great author, Truman Capote. Well, I had to get a bad imitation in somewhere, didn't I? 1998, Lewis F. Powell Jr., American Supreme Court Justice, the year 2000, Carl Banks, American cartoonist, creator of Scrooge McDuck. 2009, Senator Edward Ted Kennedy, uh, the last of the Kennedy boys uh, who entered politics, John, Robert, and Ted uh, so had a long and a really great career in the Senate. 2012, we lost the first person to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong. In 2018, another great senator, a real hero, former POW, and yes, we consider POWs heroes, John McCain. Well, that wraps it up for today's edition. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, and stay healthy. If you do go outside, please wear a mask. I've been reading more and more reports on just how important mask wearing is. I, we are just appalled by the stupidity of the anti-mask people, but this is the state we live in right now, unfortunately. Uh, don't take unproven cures. What's the one today? Oh, blood plasma. Uh, yeah, don't take unproven cures. Listen to the scientists, please, not the politicians. Be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.